Hey everyone, Jack the Crichton Chronicles. Hi, I'm Kate. And uh, we're going to discuss and review uh, Game of Thrones uh, Season 7, Episode 3, The Queen's Justice. Um, so we're going to just go in kind of character order for the most part, rather than scene order, I guess. Kind of like scene order with characters, so. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, we'll start off with uh, Jon Snow, uh, Daenerys. Um, and, uh, Varys, Red Witch, Tyrion, that whole crew, mm -hmm. um, Targaryen crew, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, pretty much we show up with Jon Snow making it to, uh, Dragonstone. Yeah. No problems whatsoever. Just, there he is. Just, there he is. <laughs> so I don't know how long that took from where he was because I don't think, that, is there any water? Like, how far does he got to travel to water? To get on a know. ship to go to Dragonstone? Because yeah, sure. Winterfell was not by any water, right? I don't know. I, I don't know the map. So I'm not it really doesn't sure. ever seem like it. Yeah, it didn't seem like it. But So yeah, he makes it to Dragonstone and uh, meets with Batyrian. Um, finally see some Dothraki. Like five to ten of them, maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so shows up and uh, pretty much has a meeting with the uh, mother of dragons and well he meets his own dragon which yeah. was actually pretty funny actually that was kind of one of our favorite scenes yeah uh, when the dragon just came out of nowhere and like scared the hell out of Jon Snow and Davos and and those not accustomed to actually dragons seeing them for the first time obviously and so yeah um, I thought that was an awesome scene um, but otherwise yeah uh, just talked with Daenerys uh, they argue pretty much uh, unsurprisingly she wants him to bend the knee uh, he refuses he's like no I'm the king of the north why would I bend my knee to you <laughs> yeah like and so you know Davos tries to back him up and and that was a kind of another funny scene where uh, they had the introduction of like Masande did the introduction of Daenerys, and it was like Mother of Dragons, and, and then the like Khaleesi her whole history, and, yeah. yeah, all her <laughs> chain of whatevers, and and then <laughs> Davos is just like, this is Jon Snow, <laughs> and then like <laughs> King of the North, <laughs> yeah. got it, all right, cool, now that's established. <laughs> so that was a good little comedic relief there. So, but otherwise, yeah, they just kind of argued of you know the reasons why he should kneel and why they should help each other or you know why she should help him if he's not even gonna whatever is he a traitor mm -hmm. you know it's kind of the thing because he declared himself king of the north which was in direct violation to her i guess being the queen of you know right so but uh yeah so they pretty much just argue it out and eventually they just kind of leave it be as like he's gonna he can stay there or whatever but it's kind of like a neutral state mm -hmm. like he thinks he's possibly a, uh, you know tr you know prisoner or whatever yeah he mentions being a prisoner and she said not yet <laughs> yeah not yet but kind of is <laughs> yeah because they, they took all took his weapons, his weapons his, boat, yeah, like took boat. everything so it's like not much he could do yeah so but uh yeah with these scenes then we also had like um you know with those most of these characters we had uh a Tyrion pretty much plain middleman mm -hmm. and uh you know he was going to Jon Snow reconnecting with him and trying to like feel out how he could help him and and then he was going and um talking with Daenerys to figure out how you know he could make that happen and try to inch her towards helping something you know mm -hmm. and some kind of mutual agreement and so uh I thought those were pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, they found out that that the the uh, the Greyjoys were screwed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how they found that out. Like in the time frames, I mean, I I have no idea. But Varys found out. Varys always finds out stuff. Yeah. But so, and uh, yeah. Speaking of Varys, actually, like I guess there was that scene. It was like Varys and the Red Witch, and they were kind of yeah. watching Jon Snow come up the the path to the Dragonstone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was a really small scene, but I liked it. Yeah. Uh, like you said. Yeah, it, um, you get an inkling that there's foreshadowing happening. And yeah, they, they seem to foreshadow that, you know, they're both destined to, like, 
die in a strange land or some such. Right. So whether that will happen in this, this series for Varys, in my head I was like, what if they'll try to work that into like a, because they're going to have all these spinoffs. Like, yeah. oh, maybe like foreshadowing it to that extent. Sure. I mean, that would be messed up, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, but he didn't like that info. He seemed very uh, upset by it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, everything there was a lot better in terms of, minus the teleporting, I guess, of yeah. possibly of Jon Snow, but we'll get into more of that later um, with other characters. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was pretty much a lot of the stuff that happened with them. Mm -hmm. So, and then we had um, uh, the uh, Cersei, obviously, Jamie, um, Euron, Yara, Elaria, and uh, yeah, that's this is part I had a, kind of an issue with, I guess, in it. But you know, Euron shows up uh, back at the capital, King's Landing, or whatever, and he's like got a parade set up for him, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Like, people are, like, cheering him on, and he's got, like, Yara, Alara, Alaria, and her, Alaria's daughter. I don't know her name. But, like, you know, like, going through the city, and everybody's, like, cheering him on. Right. Like, they're clearly, I mean, obviously they're taken as prisoners or uh, bound by, you know, Valeria's by the neck, and they're dragging oh, yeah, they're prisoners, yeah, they're yeah. prisoners, and they're dragging yeah. them through King's Landing, and yeah, all the common folk are. Yeah, my my issue is is that how do they know who Euron Euron is? I again, there's a time lapse. Maybe in the book he's a lot more prominent, like he's renowned or something. I don't know, but in this in the series, you don't really hear about him much mm -hmm. at all until he suddenly shows up, kills his brother, and then this whole crap with Theon and Yara and trying to take over, and then the whole split. So. Like, how do they know who he is? How do they know when he was coming back? Or did he send a raven from out at sea or whatever to Cersei to let her know that they're coming with his little gift? Because obviously the gift was, you know, the the prisoners. Right. And uh, especially uh, Ilaria um, mm -hmm. Sand. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was odd to me. I thought it was... I don't know why they were cheering. I was like, they... How do they even know who he is, really? How do they, they don't even know who these other people are. He could have just came in with two or three random people chained up or whatever, prisoners, and would they still cheer him? I don't know. But it was yeah. all the way up through when they had the meeting with Cersei. And, you know, I don't know. I had a real issue with that scene. Yeah. Like, I don't know. So, and, you know, beyond that, it was him just presenting the gifts and his gift to uh, the queen and... You know, he tried again to, uh, you know, get her hand, but, mm -hmm. you know, she kind of playing hard to get, so obviously, so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she uh, was like, not until the war's over, even though, you know, he brought, he went out and, I don't even know at what warp speed got out there, found where they were, Theon and, and Ilaria, and knew the boat, and got on, and whatever, <laughs> and got them all, and, and then we're back already to King's Landing, so, um, yeah, I'm pretty much going through that stuff, and, um, yeah, mm -hmm. so, I don't know, but then he does a lot of his jabs with, with, um, um, Jamie and stuff, which, personally, despite how I don't like like the parade and all that stuff doesn't make sense. I really like the actor portraying Euron mm -hmm. and just the dialogue given to him mm -hmm. and stuff. He's yeah. very showmanship and all that and it's he does a really good job and that back and forth against Jamie and just his just running his mouth <laughs> is good. It reminds me kind of like kind of like with Tyrion in the first few series where he was always just running his mouth and always had something to say yeah. and you know, and I don't know, I liked it, I thought it was well done, mm -hmm. so. I agree. Anything about the scene at all, or? No, I think we covered. Yeah, okay. Um, but, uh, and then after that, obviously then Cersei uh, got her revenge, basically, and, uh, you know, the scene that's kind of with the title of the episode, The Queen's Justice, yeah. I'm assuming, yeah. so uh, she has the uh, Alaria and her daughter chained up in yeah. the dungeon, and gives a little monologue and uh kai burns down there the, i don't think the mountain's down there but you know she basically poisons alaria's daughter mm -hmm. and uh yeah pretty much from there is you know 
her just sweet, sadistic revenge, because technically they did kill her daughter. Right, As right. well, Cersei's daughter, so... And it's, you know, tit for tat, so... Yeah, and it's, I mean, honestly, that as gut-wrenching of a scene, it was beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, the daughter's being poisoned and the mom's being suffered to watch her slowly die. Yeah. And just the, like, anguish uh, yeah. that you can just see in their facial expressions and their dialogue with each other and, and their their actions. Uh, yeah, the acting it was really good strong in scene. that as well. Yeah, it was very emotional and, like, just her, you know, the tears and her, like, yeah. like you said, her anguish and everything. It was really well done, like, really powerful scene. And, uh... I gotta be honest, like, it makes sense with that and, and her choice of poison to try to, mm -hmm. you know, do the same kind of deal and make, have her watch her daughter, you know, slowly, like she said, I'll keep you alive if you try yeah. to, whatever force food daughter throw all this. So they'll keep her alive so she does witness her daughter slowly dying or whatever. But I honestly was, like, afraid they were going to have, like, the mountain just, like, I hate to say it, but, like, like have his way with her mm. like that's what i or the or the daughter even right or something crazy that i mean because with how fucked up the series is sometimes and just like <laughs> how george R. R. martin Cersei and obviously was, his yeah. mind like i'm thinking the depraved like thing like mm -hmm. i don't know i just was like in my head i was like oh god this is gonna oh my god so i was like yeah i didn't know that's so i mean technically i kind of feel like it could have been way worse but you know so uh, yeah, I was glad it was just poison, I guess, out of the options. Yeah, but. I think it's just more of, like, the fact that, you know, like, as a viewer, anticipate what that's going to be like emotionally for, you know, yeah. the mom yeah. and the daughter. Uh, yeah. Made it just a really so. good scene, and, yeah, it could have been... <laughs> It could have been visually much harder to watch. <laughs> like yeah, said. well, I mean, it wouldn't show. Well, well no. who knows? What the <laughs> they do. So yeah, but yeah, I'm glad it was poison. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was pretty much Cersei's little revenge. Um, and then we kind of had the uh, final moment of uh, the finally the moment of Sansa and Bran, Bran uh, reuniting, and uh, not a whole lot to say there. I feel no, just not. they reunited. Yeah, and. Um, I guess you could tell, like, Bran is kind of just out of it. Like, I guess the Three-Eyed Raven before him was kind of stoic and very just matter-of-fact and emotionless in a way, to yeah. an extent. I like, he knows what his role is. Yeah, he's know? totally, like, he's and just he's like, like, this is what this, this is. This is what I do, this is how I, Yeah, you know. like, he can't, you know, they try, she's like, you're, you know, you're the... Next, basically the yeah, king you're yeah. you're but he's like i can never be and i can never be anything i'm the three-eyed raven mm -hmm. and i like she was like i don't know what that means <laughs> like, <laughs> right. i don't either man i don't even know <laughs> and then like, he gives her her uh, just like, insight of what that is and, and i know and everything and it's like fuck <laughs> okay. she's like okay you know yeah. i mean she realized kind of like she was said, just like okay whatever the hell that is i know like, but when yeah. he started to explain some of the things that well, she's gone through. Yeah, then that freaked her out. Right, exactly. Like, Bran was very, like, I feel very cold and creepy. Yeah. So, like, yeah. it was like, he just, you know, and then he was, like, obviously, you know, trying, in a way, prove, I mean, he wasn't even trying to prove. No. It was just, he was just, he was just stating. He was just <laughs> Basically, stating, yeah. it was, you know, I'm sorry, and this and that, and then, but it obviously freaked her the hell out. Because right. Because, what the hell? Right. How does he know oh, this? Yeah. And the fact that he does, and if that's the case, how much of it, which would potentially be everything, but yeah. So mm -hmm. Bran's still trying to work through, apparently, whatever's going on, he's gotten better at trying to the visions, but he says they're in bits and pieces, and he's trying to, like, formulate them. Mm -hmm. So, but the scene is also kind of good because he saw Sansa kind of showing her leadership roles and stuff, and they kind of hinted at just her knowledge of stuff, like, they passed by some armor that wasn't being done right, and, you know, this and that, and then talking about preparations for the long winter, mm -hmm. and, or long night, they call it long night or long winter, I don't remember. I think it was long night, maybe? I don't yeah. remember. So, because I think sometimes it was all night, is what they've talked about before, but I don't quite remember. But either way, so, but she's like falling in line and, and very, you know, doing a great job taking up that role as, as a leader. Mm -hmm. So, which Littlefinger then, you know, um, you know, states to her as well mm -hmm. and stuff. And um, there was just a little scene between them that I personally liked where. He basically gave her some advice because she's worried about the enemies and this and that. And she's 
pretty much been flippant with him, you know, for the whole season so far, and maybe even some of last. But, uh, you know, he gives some advice, you know, don't think of your enemies in the north, south, think of them anywhere, everywhere. Everyone's your friend, everyone's your enemy. Think of every possible thing that could happen every moment right now happening at the same time and the, all this stuff so then when something does happen you're not surprised like despite him being a very conniving sneaky whatever mm -hmm. he's a very intellectual individual mm -hmm. like you know so he he and he's i feel like he's genuinely trying to help yeah. At least I get that impression. <laughs> get that impression. Probably because he does potentially love her. Right. Like, so, but either way, it's still, he's a little creep that, you know, but he's probably made it this far because of the fact of his, you know, Can his know-how. Yeah. <laughs> just how he is. Yeah. So, and then, um, yeah, so that's about it for those. Um, and then uh, Sam and Jorah. Yeah. Also, not a whole lot to say here, I feel. Mm -hmm. I personally was disappointed by this. I know last video, I was hoping or predicting that they wouldn't find a cure and they wouldn't have any um, means of helping Jora, but sure enough, Sam just worked his little magic and yeah. it worked and so he's cured of his grayscale or whatever, mm -hmm. um, or it seems to be. I mean, there was a moment when they shake and I couldn't tell if if, if uh, Sam had a glove on or not. I was hoping he didn't because I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I couldn't remember. But nope, and then they shook hands. I was like, you even grabbed him with it, the other. You better hope it's too. cured because that's Jorah's kind of taken back too. Because like you really want to like touch, like right. I feel like you know. Yep. And he did, so maybe it's not cured, and maybe that's how Sammy goes. <laughs> but <laughs> I doubt it. But it would. I just. I don't know. I want something tragic there to happen with. I don't know why. But <laughs> like so yeah. So that's pretty much it. They just did their deal, and then um, and then there's Grey Worm. Um, taking on, taking the Unsullied and taking over Casterly Rock. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes pretty easy for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, you like this scene. Yeah, I really, I liked well, it. In the, yeah, I mean, it was um, a battle scene and I don't, like, think they did it as grandiose as they could. Um, but what I really enjoyed actually was... Uh, Tyrion's advice, that is, uh, where he talks over, um, the action as it's happening. Yeah, not so much advice, just the battle plan. Well, the battle plan, right, right. Yeah. right. He's, like, um, explaining what they'll do. Yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, so, I mean, they figured that it was going to be, they, in their heads, all the Lannisters are there, their whole kingdom is set up or whatever, and, and whatnot, I guess, is what the deal is, mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> but... So they have, you know, a select group led by Grey Worm going through, like, the tunnel system or sewer system that, I guess, Tyrion helped design and, and establish, and he made his own passageways, which was funny to, 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 to transfer back and forth hookers and, or whatever, <laughs> yeah. sluts or whatever the hell, for his own enjoyment and amusement because father wouldn't approve. Right. You know, so he had to back channel him. So, like, <laughs> I thought that was funny, and I, yeah. So, um... So yeah, but that scene in general was just kind of non, it was, uh, what am I trying to think of? It just wasn't as grand. Um, yeah. It, no. They they show the fight or whatever, and it seemed very just whatever. Obviously, they didn't have very many, very many people there defending it, mm -hmm. you know, and that they make a, a scene of it. And, um, you know, there was one scene that I had an issue with where, like, I think it was Grey Worm, like, threw a spear, and it seemed to, like, hit a guy, lift him up, and, like, pin him to, like, a door. I'm assuming a door or something on the wall. And I was just like, really? Like, is that realistic? I know you want to make it, like, badass, but, like, I mean, that'd have to take a lot of strength. I mean, the guy had armor. It did look like it was maybe light armor, maybe, but, like, still, it was armor. <laughs> like, right. and lifted him up, and, I don't know, stuff like that. Yeah. I just I mean, it wasn't, like, like it was, not realistic. It, they went in and over, they took it, and pretty much made it seem, like, without any... It was with Strength, ease, really, you know, it was yeah. really ease, and then it's like, well, yeah. battle scenes like that don't go like that. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's kind of okay because what we find out later, but, like, it was intentionally manned, just very limited. Sure. But still, I mean, they were expecting way more and all that, so uh, my other scene was the fact that when Grey Worm is, they take it over and they're like, that's it, and they're like, where is everybody? And, you know, he then looks out over the wall and <sighs> there's Euron's ships. Mm -hmm. Like, so Euron is apparently, like, 
hunted down Theon and Ilaria and all them, and then got back to the freaking King's Landing. Right. And then, oh, well, he's needed over at Casterly Rock. I have right. no idea where these things are in trajectory with each other. Right. But it's, to me, I don't know. I think it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So somebody, if you're watching, you know, and you know the map, like, and you should say something in the comments below because I'm like, I want to know how <laughs> unrealistic or realistic this is. I mean, it might not be a realistic period, but it's just like, it seems very unrealistic. Yeah. It's like, my friend was joking, you know, they got, Euron's got warp drive on his ships. Yeah. Like, because it's just like all of a sudden. And, but then I got, I had an issue because, and, and I'm like, in my head, I was like, because he looks over and he sees all that stuff and he just turns around and goes, where are the other Lannisters? And I'm like, okay, I get it, because it was probably just, it's CGI, so you didn't actually see anything out there as right. acting, but, like, right. they put in, like, your whole shit getting effed up <laughs> by Euron, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like where the, dude, your ships are toast. <laughs> like, what does it matter? Like, I don't know, it's just, he was just, like, kind of like, like, he didn't even notice, but that literally could be because the actor is just doing his lines and delivering them, and then, like, it's all CGI out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, and not knowing what it's going to be. They did not just say, like, okay, your stuff's getting, like, messed up out there. Like, right. that might be important to right. you. I don't know. Do but some facial reaction <laughs> something, or something. Something instead of just, oh, forget it. No, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. So, but that was kind of a thing. But this whole Greyjoy coming back and forth and stuff just really irritates me. So, yeah. But, yeah. and then we find out why there weren't so many there. That led to a little segue after he asked the dying <laughs> Lannister <laughs> troop or whatever that it was because jamie apparently had brought the real army to high garden mm -hmm. and to take that over and um uh yeah I, we saw brom for like <laughs> very like 10 seconds i think so i was kind of excited about that so they have this little scene with them marching and the actors and you know they're coming in and you know uh elena's looking out and I feel like she's just, like, alone. Yeah. Like, that's one thing I just don't get. Like, okay, she's up there, she's alone. Maybe their troops aren't there. But, well, there was some. There but was either some, way, yeah. like, they just cut. They don't even do, like, a battle scene. It's just <laughs> Jamie walks in. They they show some people getting thrown in a pile. And, like, they're going through coffers of money or making notes and all this stuff. And he's just walking through. I like the scene. Yeah. Like, the scene was really good. Like, him just walking through, showing what the troops have done after they've massacred everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're pillaging, taking whatever. And... And document or whatever and he's just going through it shows him going through the whole thing mm -hmm. apparently he knows right where she is i guess right. so it's like he knows the place i don't know but and then you know then he has his confrontation with elena mm -hmm. and uh yeah i don't know so elena's already back there i don't know where the troops are but like at least enough like because it didn't look like he had like a ton and he mentions like using the you know that's the other thing is like I wonder if the people knew that they were being left there to, like, essentially die by the Unsullied. Because mm. he's like, it was intentional. He's like, oh, he already knows. Euron destroyed their ships. Like, I don't know how he know that it was successful. Right. <laughs> you know, but he's like, you know, your allies are all dying or whatever. You're, you know. So they had the ships destroyed by Euron's crew. We just, you know, emptied the larders. So they're going to just, they're going to be stuck and eventually have to, like, travel across Westeros or whatever and this and that. And it's kind of like, well... Okay, but how do you even know all that like was successful? But and also you left them and did you tell those people those things? Right. Like, I don't know how that went, but either way, it's just there seems to be like epic battles missing to where they just could have had a full season, yeah. <laughs> like having like a full battle at High Garden because yeah. I'm left wondering like what was the plan for Daenerys? Like, like Theon only had a select group of people that like broke off with him after. Right. Euron took over the Pikes or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the Iron Islands or something. But like, also there was the fact that um, then there's the the High Garden. They were gonna come by land. Well, how? how? Like if they couldn't, yeah. how are they gonna? How are they gonna hold off that King's Landing or whatever and try to choke her out basically? Right. Cut off supplies if they can't even defend on the home land. ground. Yeah. Like so, if is that all their troops? They're just toast. Right. Like, they haven't even, I don't even know. I feel like there's, like, so much that's just been, like, cut and just kind of, like, disregarded right. that I have a huge issue with, uh, especially when it comes to these battles and they're supposed to, I feel like they should be epic. And, like, so what would they have done? Obviously, the Lannisters and could have just came out and crushed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if they can't defend their own, like, castle and kingdom, how the hell are they going to do it Have it, when they have no defense and they're, like, intense surrounding mm -hmm. King's Landing? So, and, yeah, just randomly, like... That also bothered me with the Dothraki because, like, 
you see all these winding paths when John showed up. Sorry, this is like a backtrack. But like, you know, it's like, okay, so there's some Dothraki on the beach, but where the hell are the rest of the Dothraki? Yeah. An entire army. They're not right. on the freaking boats. No. Like, and because obviously if they were on the boats, they're dead, because I was just thinking they probably brought those boats yeah. to attack Castle Rock. Right. <laughs> and those are effed. So it's like, okay, well, where the hell are they? Are they camping outside? Like, I don't know. It's just, these things are like, that I think are important are just kind of being just whatever, it doesn't matter, because to the showrunners or whatever, that's, like, not important. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I feel like that's, like, and I have an issue with. So, the taking over High Garden, I really love the scene, mm -hmm. and I really love the actor, uh, um, plays Elena, and, like, that dialogue. She's always had good dialogue, or just, well, maybe not always good dialogue, but her acting is really good. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and I love uh, who plays Jamie, so. Right. And, like, the two of them, they're back yeah. and forth. And, I mean, you know, he comes in and she basically is like, well, you know, fighting was never our strong suit. Yeah. You know, I, know, like I felt like, like that was a cop-out. I felt right. like that, that was, was like, the series like... cop-out for, like, how did we do? Eh, as well as you could have done or whatever. Yeah. And then she's like, well, it was never our strong suit. Golden Rose, indeed, or something like yeah. that. And it's like, what? I'm like, what? So I was just like, I don't know. But, and they kind of throw in, like, they, I think they throw in some things as to, like, well, this might explain why. Like, if somebody asks us questions, like, because she was like, why didn't your father just come and take us over if he could once you were out of money or whatever? And then, oh, I guess you suppose you needed or wanted this or whatever the case was. It was almost like people might be thinking, well, like, were they trying to think ahead of, like, well, why would people be like, why didn't they just take them over then? Right. Like, you know, or, and then it, I don't know. But either way, I just, it was an issue. But the scene was really good. She was kind of like, it is what it is. And I like that about a character. Like, mm -hmm. she just was like, well, whatever. And, you know, he, uh you know, pretty much poison is the the choice <laughs> yeah. for, you know, for assassination or killing or whatever for the most part. But, yep. uh, so, you know, he says it'll be quick, no pain, he'll make sure of that and stuff for her and, and um, you know, gives her some poison mm -hmm. and she drinks it down and was like, that's that. Yeah. But, yeah, and then she just, but then she confesses yeah. that she was the one who ordered the, uh, you know, the poisoning of Joffrey. So, and I couldn't remember back then, but I did think it was associated with her. I think it hinted at, because there was that one guy, there was the one guy who was kind of a little more portly. He was not a central character. He was mm. just a very side character in one or two episodes. And he was like with Sansa, and like, I think he might have said, he might have been from Highgarden or something. I don't know what it was, but, so basically he had... I think administered the poison. Like he was the one who right, did it, and right, that right, little right. finger like cut him off when he was trying to get on the boat when they were all trying to leave. That was like yeah. two seasons ago, yeah. maybe three, maybe. So yep, yep. yeah, and so like you know, but I think it was Highgar, and so like yeah. I, it's been so long, it'd be hard to say. But I don't know. I thought that was good and mm -hmm. um, uh, really well done. And I thought at that moment Jamie was gonna like just hack her up or do something like with all the stuff with Ira and all the stuff with Cersei, even though they kind of made up, we didn't really go into that, but they kind of hooked up Cersei and Jamie <laughs> after her. She was hot to trot after uh, exacting her revenge. <laughs> so, uh, but um, yeah, so uh, yeah, she just, or he just, I thought he was gonna go on her then and just like chop her up or do something messed up to like make her suffer because she was like let Cersei know that I was the one that gave the order or mm -hmm. something kind of thing so but um yeah so yeah that's about it yeah so I don't know I think this episode I'd probably own an odds rating of 8.75 oh I was gonna do the same yeah 8.75 yeah. uh just last episode wasn't that great um but this episode had a lot tighter dialogue even though the uh the uh um some of the scenes were lacking in some ways right and uh the teleporting really bothers me a lot mm -hmm. like i feel like that'll be a hinder from here on out since last season but like i just feel like it was a lot stronger dialogue between all the characters between daenerys and Jon snow mm -hmm. and both of them with Tyrion. yep and just even even uh uh like jamie with with uh lady tyrell and everything like yep the dialogue for a lot of the episode was a lot more fine-tuned, I felt, and a lot more, um, just, it was just stronger. Mm -hmm. So, and the scenes were really good. Um, and yeah, so that was a really good episode. Yeah. So, um, otherwise, uh, that, that's about it. Uh, that was, uh, 
episode three, <laughs> uh, the Queen's Justice. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the episode. Um, did you have any issues with any of the like teleporting or the just the lack of actual like fighting and the combat and the battles that could be epic war scenes? I know there's some in the past too. Like even when Rob Stark took Jamie, I think prisoner and stuff, it mm -hmm. kind of just cut to it and stuff. So. I mean, I guess it has existed, but I'm like, I really want to see some more like right. great scenes, like Battle of the Bastards kind of thing and and stuff. But you know, maybe to come. That was yeah. They they've yeah. got to have something, yeah. you know, like towards the last few episodes. We only got four episodes left, True. so it's going to come. And I feel like things are still kind of getting just rushed. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, let us know what you thought below, and uh, yeah, until next time. Uh, well like the video, subscribe, <laughs> and uh, maybe check out some other videos. I think they appear down here. I don't remember where I put them. But uh, yeah, until next time, take care. Bye.